to be taking you to Guyana and running through running through some of the highlights of what makes it such a such a special destination and uh, and, and, a, and a, you know highly highly recommend a, a visit um, so here I am here perched on the edge of, of Kaito Falls and it's yeah it's just a, a very very special place so where are we I'm um, just a, a, a brief bit of geography so here is here is Guyana, sandwiched between Venezuela and Suriname and bordering Brazil. And we reach Guyana. We 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 typically, um, up till now, have had to fly via Trinidad. That's been the best route. You can fly fly via, via Barbados as well, but it's usually via, via Trinidad and then on from Trinidad to Georgetown. But they've actually just released um, a, a, a direct uh, um, route. So from Gatwick, straight to Georgetown, just touching down in St. Lucia on the way. So it is actually you know, you know, you know, um, easier to get to now, which is which is great. And when we arrive, we spend the first night in, in Georgetown, the capital, just to you know, get over the flight. And uh, and then the next morning, we, we we get straight into the interior. It's the interior of the country where, where we're really focusing on. And we, we travel you know, south along this pretty much sort of one sort of main road that runs which is a main road it's a track but one um, route through the, the heart of the country uh, the linden the linden to lethem roads so here's linden and it runs right the way down through the country and we're traveling along that road stopping at various points along the way so we will take a chartered flight on the second day and get straight into the action um, flying over endless uh, rainforest and it's a really special experience we charter a light aircraft and we fly over this, what they call the sort of sea of broccoli. You're looking down and it's just endless forest as far as the eye can see. And it's just a, a really sort of humbling view and, 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 a, and, and just so special to think that these places still exist. And Guyana is still around 80% covered in, you know, in this sort of untouched, pristine um, rainforest. And just, yeah, you really feel um, like you're, you know, you're traveling to some some places that are just you know just really little explored, some areas that have really never been explored, and this is um, the view that we that, that we have um, around you know, twenty minutes, half an hour after taking off. We we start we do a few we circle over the top of Kaito Falls, and it's an absolutely incredible view. And this photo taken um, from from the aircraft. Um, so Kaito is actually you know the largest. Um, sort of single drop waterfall in in terms of the volume of water that's that's running that's flowing over it um, at around 225 meters um, in in height. There are there are higher waterfalls around the world, quite a few higher waterfalls, but it's uh, is that volume of water as well that makes it so impressive. And it's around four times the the height of Niagara, so it's a really impressive sight. And we'll then land at uh, at the Kaito National Park, and we're able to have an explore here for a couple of hours. Do, do, do some birding and, uh, and, and have, a, have a good sort of view of the falls from the ground as well. Get, you, can, you can get right up to the edge. It's not, it's not like in some other parts of the world where there's lots of tourists around, handrails, you know, souvenir shops. It's just our group of eight, ten people um, and, and, and the falls all to ourselves. It's absolutely, absolutely incredible. Here's another another view of, of Kaito from, yeah, you can walk right up to the edge and uh, to, to experience it. And that's the, the uh, yeah, the view from there. Um, we explore, we, we're doing some birding. It's a great place to see uh, Guyana Cock of the Rock, actually. Had our group that's just returned had some really nice sightings of, of uh, you yeah, know, had four or five males at a lek site. Um, and we also go finding the smaller things as well. This is um, the endemic golden rocket frog, which is found uh, this is the only place you know it, it's it's found in the bromeliads that uh, that, that are found around the around the, uh, the the falls so we'll go searching through these amazing plants looking at the little pools of water inside and hope to find this uh, this lovely little frog um yeah, in, in these uh, in these bromeliads and we'll you know, we'll explore taking the views you know just scanning across areas that perhaps no one's ever been to it's it's that it's that remote and that pristine and this is a, a view um, across the uh, across the, uh, the, the the national park from the top of the falls. So from there we we get back in our the light aircraft and then fly on uh, to our first lodge and we stay for the first two nights of the tour at a, a lodge called Ewok Rama Lodge or you know, it's a it's a it's a research station and this is a view uh, of that uh, of that lodge from the air. So you can see it's 
you know, completely surrounded um, by, you know, by fantastic habitat and with a really nice access onto the, the onto the Essequibo River, which is the longest river in Guyana. And we'll just take some really nice boat trips and lovely trails through the forest here um, and get out exploring, finding, you know, finding, uh, finding wildlife, of course. So macaws are really, uh, you know, are, are very numerous still. This is scarlet macaw here. We we'll often have you know, flocks of, of, uh, of blue and gold macaws uh, flying over regularly. There's lovely raucous calls they give out as the flocks fly over the lodge, um, and, and red and green macaw as well. So we should see we should have plenty of encounters with the with the large macaws. We'll get into the into the the, the forest for some birding. This is crimson crested uh, um, woodpecker here, and there'll be lots of you know, tanagers and um, and ant birds and uh, and yeah. Uh, a whole host of, uh, of different species we can find. I mean, it's pristine rainforest. People often say, you know, what's the, you know, how is the birding um, in Guyana? It's it's as tough as it can get at times. You're walking at times, you know, through through the forest, and you know, you, you, you know it, it's it's dense, pristine forest, and you won't see much for a little bit, and then you come across a a, a, you know, a mixed flock of, of species, and it's all hell breaks loose. The next sort of you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, and you're, you're trying to you're figure out what's there, and it's, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's, uh, it's, but this is, yeah, it's, it's pristine, untouched rainforest. It's a, yeah, inc incredible habitat. This, this, this bird here isn't really a, you know, it isn't a looker. This is a, a member of the Katinga family. It's the, the, the screaming piha. But it's one of the birds, one of the sort of iconic sounds of the, of the rainforest. As you're walking the trails um, and, ex and exploring here, you'll, the, the sound of screaming piha is, is all around you. Um, and, and often every day you're hearing this bird. It can be tricky to see. This is a shot of it through the, through the foliage here. Um, but I'll try and um, play this, the, the, the sound of this, this bird, a video that was taken by our, by our leader um, Wally Prince, he, he, he sent it to me recently. So this is a, a video, see if you can hear it. So I hope you could all hear that. And that, 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 that takes me back to the, to the rainforests of, of South America. I've you heard them in, in Guyana and, 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 and Peru uh, as well. Um, yeah, fantastic sound. And it's one of the, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, move on from, from that. Um, we'll head to Mannequin Lex as one of my grainy photos. I will say that all the photos on both of my talks this evening are taken um, on the tour. There's no sort of stock professional images and they're all the grainy ones by myself and the better ones by the by group members and, 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 and tour leaders. This is a white cat mannequin. So we'll visit a number of um, different you know, mannequin Lex. So these birds, the males will come and display um, to attract the attention of the females and we can we'll visit known sort of lek sites of these these fabulous little birds. White-throated toucans, really loud distinctive sort of yelping call, um, often fills the air around the lodge in the in the early morning so we can get out and see these sort of iconic Amazonian um, species. I always include a snake slide, here it is for, for Guyana, the, the fur de lance um, with this incredible camouflage resting in the in the leaf litter a um, very, you know, very venomous pit viper, nothing to be concerned of, of course. Um, but we, we see them fairly frequently on the tour, and we, we've got a chance of seeing another, you know, a range of, of, of reptiles and amphibians as we as we travel um, through the through the country. And as I said, we'll spend time viewing wildlife um, by boat as well. So there's plenty of opportunities to walk, you know, cover the the, the vast array of trails here at Ewok Rama, but we'll get out on the Essequibo and just take some. You know, take some lovely um, boat outings and view view, view the wildlife from the, you know, from the water, whether it's troops of capuchin monkeys or um, you know, you know, paralysed jacamar possibly perched up in the riverside vegetation. There's just there's always something that we you know came and hauled out on the sandbanks and, and, and egrets everywhere and um, maybe a king vulture. So. It's an adventure in Guyana, and there's no doubt about it. You're heading to an area where not many people visit. I think they, I think they say that more people visit uh, Machu Picchu in a day than visit Guyana in a year, or something ridiculous like that. Um, and this is a sort of vehicle you need to travel through this, you know, through the country, through the interior. It's a bit of a bumpy road, a bit of an adventure, an, an exciting journey, but it's um, it's it's so worth it to to get to places where very few people um, visit.
So after we walk Rama for a couple of nights, we're, we're still in the, the sort of dense rainforest um, and we visit Atta, Atta Lodge for, for three nights, a really you know, lovely small lodge, completely surrounded by, by pristine primary rainforest. And we'll, we've got time here to really immerse ourselves in, the, you know, in, in, the, in this incredible um, environment before we move south. And as you move south, you sort of, more, you, you sort of come into more natural savanna land as you move, move south. So this is our um, yeah, three sort of final nights in, in the sort of dense rainforest. Black curassows will be wandering around the grounds of the, of the lodge coming out of the forest. We might see um, grey wing um, trumpeters as well uh, moving out into the into the shorter grass uh, turf around the around the lodge. There's a lovely canopy walkway at Atta. We've got access to that, <clears throat> so we can get up there in the early mornings, uh, and it's just a really special experience to get up on these uh, you know, on, on the on the walkway and these and, and these towers here. And just soak up the rainforest and the, the, the sights and the sounds um, as, the, as, the, as the rainforest comes to life. There'll be, um, be howler monkeys up here. It's a great place to see um, sort of species such as you know, Pompadour Katinga we might see here, um, Gu um, Guyana and Toucanet, for instance. Lots of you know, you know, endemic or, or range restricted species that we hope to see sort of scanning and, and, uh, and having a good look from the, from the canopy walkway. This is a yeah, red howler monkey and the, and the roaring sound is this, they, they don't sort of howl, they sort of a deep sort of guttural roar um, very early in the morning often is, is one of the features of, of staying at Atta. He looks rather grumpy here, this one's seen from the, um, from, from, from the walkway and uh, yeah they make an amazing sound, we've got a very good chance of coming across them. We're always on the, on the lookout for, for any mammals um, and we should, we should come across uh, red howlers during the tour. Not a very good photo. This is a this is a, a footprint of of jaguar, and this is typically as close as you come to jaguar um, in in Guyana. I'll talk about Brazil uh, later on. That's the place to go for jaguars. But there's always the chance. Our group um, you know, last year, our group were, were walking on a trail at Atta and actually came across a jaguar on foot on one of the on one of the uh, the forest trails there. So it happens. They're around. Everything is 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 here, of course. But it's you know it's. You know, pristine dense habitat and you've got to be very lucky to, to see to see jaguar but uh yeah we we, we, we occasionally see tapir um uh, tyra on occasion uh, three-toed sloth so there's a there's a range of mammals we can see here from atta we'll head to a well-known lek site for this spectacular bird the the guyanan cock of the rock and there's two species of cock of the rock there's andean and uh and guyanan and this the guyanan cock of the rock is Bit of a brighter orange and it's got this amazing feathering here coming off the off the back and that amazing comb it's yeah quite a quite an incredible bird so yeah we'll we'll walk on an amazing uh, walk through the forest to get to these huge sort of rocky outcrops and boulders where indeed the the females nest they're, they're, they're called the cock of the rock for a reason they nest on these you know uh, on the nest is actually attached to the rocks and males will come together and, and sort of display for the attention of, of, of females and yeah, really amazing. The beak is in here somewhere. When you when you're when you're watching it, you think, "Oh, that's someone that's his beak." But it's amazing, you know, incredible bird. We'll make an effort to find them. We might see troops of of, of black spider monkeys here uh, crashing through the canopy. This family was looking down on us, um, shaking the branches, and a bit a bit agitated by by our presence. So we walk we walked quickly on. They're, they're often uh, often around. Little, little youngster clinging onto mum there. Um, and uh, there's just so much life, so much, so much of everything to to enjoy. This is a one of the one of the blue morpho butterflies, huge sort of huge huge butterfly, sort of dinner plate size butterfly gliding through the through the forest with these amazing flashes of blue on the wing. Really, really special. So that's sort of five nights, sort of immersed in that in the you know, pristine, untouched primary rainforest habitat enjoying boat trips and, and, and walking the forest trail seeing a, a great range of species and as we move south we come out onto this sort of natural um, savanna we still have you know, big big areas of, for, of, of rainforest here but these open areas as well and this is that's a Sarama um, lodge really lovely lodge they're all sort of fam family run um, you know special places to stay and you're welcomed with with real warmth by the by the families here and, uh, and uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're with your guides right throughout the tour, and then there's often um, local guides at the lodges. You know, the youngsters really wanting to get into into wildlife and guiding, and uh, they'll come out with you and know where things are found. And it's a really makes a really lovely atmosphere. 
And there'll be a different suite of species here. It's a little bit more open ground, a bit more area to, 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 to scan and look further. Burrowing owl here, I'm out in the grassland, and buff necked ibis and, and, uh, and southern lapwings here, you know, walking through the through this uh, more open savanna land. And we've still got the, you know, the, 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 the typical, you know, the rainforest species, blue and red and, um, yeah, red and blue macaw here uh, flying overhead. There's often a, an active harp eagle nest um, from, from Sremer. So if, there, if, there's a, if there's a good chance of, 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 the, of the nest active and there's a good chance we'll, we'll head out and, um, and, uh, and walk to the nest. They, they, they nest in these incredible you know, emergent trees breaking through the, the canopy. Um, this is the nest here, um, and uh, and uh, yeah, we, we certainly will ha will have a crack at uh, at, um, at seeing harpy eagle, and many many are lucky. Uh, very good around at us. Uh, 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 you know, adult birds are regularly seen around there, but we will we will try and visit a, a nest site if we if we can. Um, beautiful adult harpy eagle here, and they'll be feeding largely on you know on primates and sloths, and uh, the young birds hang around the nest for a long time. So they'll be sort of fully grown by sort of four or five months, but they'll stick around for another um, four or five months for, for the adults to bring in, um, you know, prey. So there's a there's a quite a large window to visit the nest and and see at least a sort of fully grown youngster. We'll go on some again some lovely walks in the, in the surrounding habitat. We might see white faced uh, the white faced saki monkey here, the, the the male here and the brown female behind. So lots and lots to enjoy. Beautiful, striking vermilion flycatcher here, really stunning species. Um, you know, often seen out in this more open country. Um, Yellow-faced caracara and black vulture here, just hanging around the, the lodge grounds. There's there's always there's always so much to see. And this is a sort of yeah, typical view over the over the sort of savannah open open country as you move south through the interior of Guyana. We'll then finish at Karanambu Ranch, an old, an old cattle ranch. Um, all the all the accommodations, you, they're all en suite. Um, you, you don't have to share at all. There's no camping. It's you know, they're, they're all clean and comfortable. You know, you know, basic of course compared to some of your African lodges. Uh, uh, it sort of goes without saying. But yeah, you've got your own your own facilities. You know, very clean, comfortable lodges. Um, not very lovely places to stay, and you know, brilliant wildlife of course. And from here, we can head out again onto the onto the savannah land and, and, and have an excellent chance of seeing this fantastic animal, the, the giant anteater. Um, yeah, yeah, amazing animal. It's really long, you know, bushy tail here, over sort of you know two meters from your know, long, big, big animal. And, uh, and and they can actually sometimes approach fairly, you know, fairly close. They don't they don't have great, they rely heavily on their sense of smell. They don't have great hearing or um, or, or eyesight. So um, yeah, they, you can get some, some fantastic views. And that big bushy tail for, you know, shade when it's really hot and, and keeping warm at night and um, just in, you know, incredible evolution with the to, to come up with that, such an incredible species and again here we'll be out on the on the on the Rupununi and river watching uh you know, watching wildlife from the water again and just uh, you're getting out and, and spotting wildlife and around every bend there'll be sandbanks covered in you know be spectacled and black caiman and different uh you know, heron species capped heron Kukori heron, um, Agami heron, hopefully. Um, this is a big black uh, caiman, you know, the largest of the of the of the caiman of the of the, of the alligator uh, family. Really, really impressive, and we'll we'll get close views of them um, uh, as we uh, as we travel around. And again, there won't be lots of other boats around. You know, you head out for a whole afternoon on the on the river, and you you won't see anyone else. And um, it's uh, it's a really sort of you get that feeling of being you're on your own in this wilderness. There's very few other tourists around, and what's make, what, and what makes it you know, just a very, very special place to visit. Um, Karanamba was the was the home of the sort of legendary uh, Diane McTurk, who who, uh, who who brought in orphaned giant river otters and sort of dedicated their life really to you know, to looking after them and, and, and releasing them back into the back into the wild there. And this is probably the reason why they're still, you know, they're doing so, you know, so well in that area. And this shot just shows you the sort of size of a giant river otter and um, carrying it down to the to the river at Karanambu. And uh, yeah, a huge paddle-like tail there. Uh, fantastic creatures. And this is one of my photos from my time there. And, you know, there'll be far better photos. Well, I'll show you from the Pantanal and they're much easier to see there. But they, we very good success with finding them at Karanambu. 
but they're, they're not so used to people. There's not so many people around. Um, they're not used to the boat, so they tend to be a little bit more um, wary and shy. But that's the that's the nature of it in in, in Guyana. You, the, 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 the wildlife isn't used to people being around, but it's, it's all there. We have some brilliant sightings. This is a young um, agami heron creeping through the through through the uh, through the edge of the river. See the little mangroves there. We've got a good chance of seeing all five of South America's kingfishers. This is um, Amazon. Amazon kingfisher here. This is the um, rather bizarre capuchin bird, another member of the Katinga family. It sort of looks you know, bald on top and makes this really funny sort of you know almost mechanical sort of you know, cow-like call in the early mornings, <laughs> calling um, from the forest around Karanamba. We'll head out and, and try and find a, um, um, some of these birds uh, just uh, around the lodge. Excuse me. Another special feature here is finding these areas of, of quiet uh, waters or backwaters where you get these huge and giant water lilies. It's a striated heron here walking across the top of one of these absolutely massive lilies. And we'll, again, we'll head out, we'll shut the, we'll just, you know, shut the engine off and just float through and this, this amazing habitat, having I mean, a really good look at these, at these giant water lilies. And it's a, it's a lovely way to end the day. You, know, you sit with a, with a bit of, a bit of rum punch and a bit of a sundowner. Um, in amongst all the all the giant water lilies and the, and the sounds of the forest, it's a it's a wonderful experience. And the the flowers start to open up, and the and the insects come in and pollinate them. It's really really special. So after Karanambu, we'll then fly back to Georgetown, and we'll spend a couple of days um, in Georgetown doing a bit of birding along the Demerara River and the coastal areas. There's a few other species along there that we can pick up. And we'll head out and, and try and find scarlet ibis and hoatzin. Hoatzin being the the, the national bird of, of Guyana, so we'll, we'll we'll get some we'll see a lot of a lot of different species uh, along the along the coastal areas there, um, in in Georgetown, and as I said, those of you that, that want to sort of extend your holiday and carry on um, and 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 head to you know, head somewhere on the way on the way there on the way back, it is possible and it's uh, you know to fly to fly, fly via Trinidad and uh, yeah stay at the Asia White Centre for instance is a, is a, is a possibility. And, we you know, were able to arrange that to have some, yeah, bit of bit of relaxation and sort of easy birding um, in Trinidad on the, on the way back. So that's a, yeah, a good a good option there. But um, that's a whistle stop through through Guyana, a fantastic place, a really you know, very special place to visit. Um, and yeah, any any questions, of course, you can uh, yeah feel free to pop on the chat or or ask at the end.